Everybody, Patty Spittler is here from Pet Pals TV and Dr. Mark Petersman from Noah's Animal Hospital. Glad to have you both here today. Thanks for having us. Yes. Well, and very hard. quickly, I should say, Susan's not feeling well today. This should be her segment. So get well, Susan. You're a sick puppy. We want you to feel better. <laughs> Fingers crossed Susan. for her. That's okay. for sure. We are here on a kind of a serious topic, though, today, talking about paro, parvo, a virus in dogs. Let's get the backstory here, Dr. Petersman. Tell me about these 10 puppies that you have seen with parvo. So this year alone, we've already actually treated over 30 cases. Cases. Oh, um, but this past week, um, Animal Control had a litter of uh, nine or ten puppies that uh, ended up being exposed to parvo and coming down with it. And because of the limitations in their abilities to treat it and have it isolated, because it's such a communicable disease, it can be passed from one animal to another mm -hmm. so simply. Um, they were at danger of being put down and being euthanized. Mm. Um, and as a last resort, we actually opened up one of our old buildings that we have moved out of That's uh, just to be able to house these animals um, and give them a chance and save their life. Um, and I am happy to report today that all of them are doing quite well. Oh, what a rescue story yes, then. So, yes. so what is parvo? It's a what virus. Yes. How do dogs get it? And what are some of the, what does it look like when they actually have it? So parvovirus is a, uh, obviously it's a viral disease that's mm -hmm. passed from one animal to another by fecal oral route. So wherever an animal is defecating, they're basically leaving, they can leave this virus behind. Okay. And it is something that can live in the soil and in the environment for up to five to seven years. Over years. winter, over summer, years. Wow. So this is something if you you just moved into a new house and they had a parvo dog before it, you could get it from, your dog could get it from just that house and from that soil. Huh. So this is something that is extremely deadly in especially young puppies, puppies. and in old puppies, especially once they're unvaccinated. Okay. That is the biggest thing is vaccination, vaccination, vaccination. They need to be vaccinated for this disease. And there's certain breeds too that are more susceptible? Yes. I was reading? Yes. Uh, the the easy way to say it is the brown and black breeds. So Dobermans, um, pit bull terriers, um, Yorkies. Stilly. We're not going to talk about it right <laughs> now. Um, He's but got his vaccine. Shots. Yes. So the brown and black breeds tend to be able to get it easier, mm -hmm. um, and so we do uh, we, we do consider them kind of at a higher risk. Now some folks say, okay, I, I adopted my puppy and it had all his vaccines from whatever shelter or rescue I adopted him from. What do you have to say about booster shots then? Are those necessary to prevent against parvo? Absolutely, absolutely. One vaccine does not give you a really good immunity to parvo, okay? You need at least two vaccines three to four weeks apart, typically, in order to get that really good long-lasting immunity. Mm. And depending on the animal's uh, immune status. I mean, some animals are immune suppressed when they're younger or have multiple diseases when they're younger or infections. That can limit their ability to actually get an immunity to this. So many times you have to booster it several times. That's mm -hmm. why working closely with a veterinarian or with right. a veterinary staff is essential for these in order to make sure that your animal is properly vaccinated. Mm. And it's not that expensive, is it? No, like no, no. Bucks or something? You're looking at about $10 to $15 for Cut. the vaccine. See? Okay. Just a few times, and that can save their life. With Parvo, just a treatment for it. Mm -hmm. um, hospitalization is typically fairly effective. We're looking at 75 to 95 percent effective in okay. saving their okay. life. Yeah. But again, it's down to 75 percent. Prevent it ahead of time, then you yeah. know. And but save you're looking their at three to five thousand for, Jeez. or even more, depending and you know on how what bad they are. My mother would say prevention is worth a pound of cure. cure of Absolutely. Of so prevention, prevention. Well, we've got you here, Doc. Uh, the weather's heating weather. up. We've been talking Absolutely. about that quite a bit. What's your one message then to folks at home about dogs and any animals or pets outside in the heat this week? Well, they shouldn't be outside. Uh, they okay. need to come in immediately. Um, any of the animals that are outside right now, they are at such a huge risk mm. for heat exhaustion um, as well as for heat stroke. This is basically where their temperature, their internal temperature gets up above 107 degrees and that can actually cause multi-organ failure and even death My very goodness. quickly. Not only that, but even just the topical burns that they can experience within seconds mm. because of how hot the it gets. Pause of their feet. Absolutely. Something yes. we'll continue to talk about, uh, especially on daybreak tomorrow. So we're looking forward to that. And then on right. Sunday, of course, you guys got a lot more coming up. More with Pet Pals TV and you'll see me <laughs> uh, actually holding a snake. Uh, I went to the zoo and it was it started off as a pet. And guess what? It got too big. It's oh, python. No. So we talk about uh, <laughs> and that really huge attraction there too, the, the new snake exhibit. And also I talk with um, Lap of Love and this doctor comes to your home, she's a veterinarian, and she helps when it's time to your pet to cross to the Rainbow Bridge and at home so the animal's not stressed.
Okay. Very important stuff. Oh, and your first look at Lion King, which opens on Friday, the movie. You've got all animals yeah. all of that, on TV all of that. this weekend. And then Sunday on Great Day TV, 2:10:30, uh, Inside Indie Shorts for the Heartland Film Festival. A I favorite don't know why every year. Did that, this is what Indie Shorts looks like. There we go. Patty, thank you, Doc. Thanks for coming in. We Absolutely. so appreciate your message. All right, Randy, over to you.